Hey, welcome back, my cheesy minions. After that uh, very odd-sounding countdown that I've come to love on the YouTube premiere of uh, the Miami Dolphins against the Phoenix Inferno. And uh, Phoenix Inferno is coached by Skip Gandy, and he was off to a hot 2-0 start, but I believe he is now on a two-game uh, losing streak. And uh, he is in the other conference, um, a.k.a. the Red Division. And, um, yeah, so he is, like I said, 2-2. Two and two. He needs this win to stay on pace. Um, with uh, his division. However, this is an important game for me because uh, President Tim actually already dropped this week down to 3-2. and two, So I can actually take control of my division, my blue division, again now with a win uh, to advance to 4-1. and one. So that is uh, something I definitely want to do. I want to definitely, um, obviously, uh, you know, keep this team going. I want to win this division, darn it. Um, and obviously President Tim already has a win over me, so it would be really nice to have at least the game's advantage over him. Um, now for, uh, Skip Gandy, um, like I said, he's on a two-game losing streak, but he's been playing very, very well, so, um, I have to hope that I can, uh, quelch, uh, um, well, quelch his, uh, good play, uh, with my good play, as well as, uh, yeah, hopefully, um, swing the momentum in my favor here, and he is a very strong draft, like everyone does, here's my draft, I didn't make any transactions this week, I was thinking about it, but, um, I'm probably going to have to save a transaction for a couple weeks from now against use. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, but anyway, here is Skep Gandy's team. And this is the guy who paid a huge amount of money, uh, well, fake money, for there he is, Greninja. And um, he also uh, tweaked his team quite a bit. He uh, went and got Garchomp. Now, obviously, that's a Mega Garchomp on the picture, but he's probably just going to be using normal Garchomp. Just that he gets, I mean, it's the same tier, so might as well have the Mega Stone enabled um, if he ever wants to use it. Um, he has Metagross, um, which is actually uh, probably going into this match the Pokemon I'm afraid of most. Um, the team I brought, if he brings Agilagross, it's going to be problematic for me because um, Agilagross uh, obviously is not affected by Sticky Webs. And um, yeah, it could just be, it could hit really hard. I don't have anything, I didn't bring, decide to bring anything that can hit this thing extremely, extremely hard. Um, obviously the Mega Galalee as well. Um, I also know he's really into Meowstic. And he might bring it to try to, like, um, bounce my webs back in the first turn. Um, however, I'm kind of thinking maybe he won't. I mean, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. Um, because, obviously, I have Tapu Lele. And that's the other reason that I'm not super afraid of Glalie is because I have uh, Tapu Lele. But I'm kind of thinking that he's going to bring a Scarf or maybe even two. I I'm kind of expecting a Scarf Greninja so he can outpace uh, my um, Tapu Lele. And I'm uh, kind of thinking he might even go Scarf Chomp. Who knows? Um, he does have the speed advantage already, but he wants to make sure that he can outspeed my, um, my, uh, Scarfers, most notably my, uh, Tapu Lele, so, anyway, like I said, um, I haven't actually played the battle yet, because I've been narrating these, um, intros before I play the actual battle, I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and, uh, hopefully it goes well for me, and, um, for you guys, it'll be instantaneous, here's the battle. So, yeah, there's the teams, and, uh, like I said in pregame, uh, no Meowstic, and, uh, pretty much kind of what I expected. Um, going into this, but, uh, it's gonna be a rough one, but he has a lot of physical threats, I feel, uh, which is why I feel comfortable with, uh, my match defense, uh, Vaporeon, and for the first time this season, uh, my Type Null, so, um, let's hopefully have, uh, give Type Null here a good debut. So, here we go. Type Null, I'm gonna go ahead and lead with it. I don't see the Meowstic, so I decide not to lead with Masquerain. That was my plan. If I saw Meowstic, lead with Masquerain, else lead with this, uh, Type Null, who pretty much can tank any hit from Skep Gandy's team, um, which is something I noticed in my prep, is that he has very little to hit it very hard. So, um, I'm just going to go for the U-turn as he switches out into his Electivire, um, and that's an interesting switch, as I go out into my Tapu Lele, and I do that to set up my terrain, and um, I decide to actually switch out, because this thing could be, like, Scarfed or something, and I don't want to risk, I don't know if I can, well, I think I can kill a Psychic, but I decide just to um, play it safe go out into my um, Type Null, and uh, yeah, Type Null pretty much takes any hit from that thing really well, including a Cross Chop. He goes into his Metagross and just goes for the um, Hammer Arm, so that's a thing that does damage to me, but it actually really doesn't. As you can see, Type Null takes that like a champ, and I get the T-Wave off on this thing, because I was actually really afraid of Agility Metagross, so like I said, I think in pregame, so um, I wanted to get this thing T-Waved, and um, thankfully he didn't come in with Electivire again there. And I'm just going to go out of my Masquerade now, because, um, yeah, he was just going for Hammer Arm, so I'm just going to go into that. And I'd like to set up my Sticky Web, so that's what I do. 
And in comes Electivire, so this thing comes back. And I get my webs up, which is nice. But now I'm like, I don't want to let Masquerade die at this point. Because my Masquerade is actually kind of interesting this week. And uh, it might actually be able to do some damage to his squad. So, anyway, he's going to go for the Wild Charge as I go to my Type Null. And, yeah, Type Null is, like, really, really broken against this team. It's, it's actually doing a lot of work already. Um, although it is at half HP now, so I have to be a little more careful with it. But it's nice because it has that slow U-turn, which means that, um... I mean, the slow U-turn is really nice because it means that it's going to be, when I U-turn, it's going to be Type Null taking the hit, not the Pokemon coming in, so it's, it's safe. Anyway, Heat Ran is going to come out. As you can see, I have the Air Balloon this week. Um, but because of the paralysis, I'm going to be able to straight up outspeed this Metagross. That crit did not matter. Um, it did like over 100. It, it did it did more than max HP, and he was slightly damaged. So, um, yeah, that, that that did not matter unless he was like Assault Vest. I, even if he is Assault Vest, I don't know if that mattered. Anyway, um, he's going to go with the Cross Chop now, and that does reveal that the Electivire is indeed Scarf because he's actually outspeeding me here despite uh, the Sticky Webs being in effect. Uh, which means that he has to be scarfed. So, knowing that, I go into my Masquerade knowing he's locked into Cross Chop after sitting on my own Stealth Rocks, and I get the Intimidate on this thing, which means it's not going to be able to do very much, and I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and Quiver Dance. And Quiver Dance, honestly, isn't the interesting thing about this set, um, but in comes Comfy, and this Comfy thing, every time I see it, it does annoying amount of work to me. Like, it, it does work against me, and I, I can't even explain it, but I'm like, okay, I have Quiver Dance. So I'm going to go for it, although this thing has actually really good special, if, especially if he's specially invested. I'm like, maybe he didn't bring spe like complete special investment this week. Actually, he probably did, but I'm going to go for another Quiver Dance. I'm like, okay, if I have three, I think I have a chance. Unfortunately, this thing does have his de does ha uh, is his defogger, so he's going to actually get rid of my webs, which isn't great. And um, he probably has Leech Sheet and all that annoying things, but I'm like, okay, you know what? I want to Quiver Dance again, so now I have three Quiver Dances. And I'm gonna actually go for a, uh, I'm gonna go for a sticky web this turn. He does get the late sheet off, but it's like whatever. It's gonna take a while to kill me. He's only attacking move. I mean, we probably doesn't have calm mind, knowing what we know already, because we we saw the defog. We saw he he has one attacking move, draining kiss. Okay, that's fine. Um, draining kiss is not gonna do that much to my masquerade. Um, so I get my sticky web up, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I know that, I know Comfy resists, but. A Savage spin out, as I was calcing it, I'm like, it has like a 50-50 chance to kill standard Comfy. Unless he went like incredibly heavily special defense invested. So, I'm going to go for it. And it looks like this thing was incredibly, incredibly special defense invested. It survives! I should have I should have gotten greedy. I went for another Quiver Dance. I should have went for two, because honestly, this thing has nothing to do to me. Um, but now I kind of just blew it. Honestly, I could have gotten another Quiver Dance easily before popping that, but now, before, I mean, I do have Scald, which does a little more than Bug Buzz because of, uh, the resistance Fairy has to Bug, but this thing has, like, priority, um, Synthesis is because of his Triage ability, um, and that means I can just, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty much going to try to stall here, um, so, yeah, I'm gonna try to, like, Scald him. And uh, try to use the sticky webs the turn I die, which might work, but it probably won't because he'll be probably smart enough to defog that turn. But at this point, it's like, whatever. Masquerade, I really, really wanted to get you just one kill. But man, I mean, it would have been crazy if Masquerade just swept this up. I mean, granted, he probably. I mean, actually, maybe he didn't bring Ice Shard on his um, Glalie. I mean, who knows? But um, because he might not have brought it because of uh, Tapu Lele. But if he did, obviously, he would have been able to stop it, but. Man, could have had it, maybe. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and keep Scalding. Um, he, I eventually do get a burn off the Scald, which keeps me from statusing it otherwise, so it might actually be more harmful than helpful. But at least it's some residual damage on this annoying freaking coffee Pokemon that has honestly been out way too long. Anyway, going to go to my Beedrill, figuring this thing will scare it away. He won't want to lose Comfy, right? So I just go for the U-turn, thinking that he pretty much has to switch. He's not going to risk letting me jab this thing. But he ends up staying in, and that was shocking, because of how much important it seems that like Comfy is to his game plan right now. But, U-Turn doesn't kill, so that sucks. I'm just going to go to my Vapor. I'm like, you know what, fine, I know your moves. You can Leech Seed me. I'm just going to go ahead and get Tapu, or sorry, not Tapu, get Type Null healthy. Because, if Type Null gets healthy, 
then uh, it can continue to wall your stupid physical Pokémon. Because I do, obviously, have Wish on this Vaporeon. And um, even if he does predict the switch in a tap... Uh, why do I keep saying Tapu? Type Null. Um, even if he does predict the switch in a Null, I, if he just goes for Elite Sheet, whatever. He gets one turn Elite Sheet on my Null, and then I just go for my slow U-turn. And um, because of how fast Confi is, and if you're just faster than me, he can't uh, Leech Sheet me on the Switch with that slow U-turn. So, once again, the slow U-turn is actually really strong. A lot Pivoting moves are strong in general, but I think their slow pivoting moves actually has um, really underrated value on teams because of the ability to, it, to protect the Pokemon coming in. But anyway, he goes into Greninja as I go into my Type Null, so he doesn't. He sees that coming, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna U-turn against you anyway. Um, he ends up taunting me, I guess, not wanting me to T-wave him. Um, that works out for me because that makes U-turn super effective. And on top of that, I get the crit on Greninja, which is obviously his like top dollar Pokemon. So cripples this thing, which is amazing. And I'm just gonna go into B, and I'm like, it's gonna U-turn again, man. What are you gonna do? He ends up just staying in with Greninja and letting it die. Um, I figured that I outspeed him if he's scarfed, and if, I mean, he locked himself in a taunt if he's scarfed, so he's probably not scarfed. So I can just go for the U-turn with impunity, because I'm going to be faster. And, um, yeah, Tapu Lele now comes in, gets some psychic terrain up in y'all. In comes his Galele, which unfortunately still exists. And, um, I can't quite kill a psychic, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it into Type Null, this Wally Pokémon for me. And, uh, like I said, he has, like, nothing. He can go for the double edge. That's his worst move, uh, his best move against me. But it's still gonna do crap. Here comes the Iron Head. I guess to hit me super effective on the lay. But, uh, no. Does nothing. And, uh, yeah, he's not even gonna go for the double edge. He's, after seeing that, just goes out into his Garchomp. And, um, I just go for the return. It's a good play because it actually ends up getting, um, his rough skin damage. Although I do not see his, um... He doesn't have the Rocky Helmet. So I'm gonna assume this thing is choice in some way. Probably choice scarfed. Um, that Earthquake damage, uh, didn't do bandit damage, so that's probably a Scarf, uh, Chomp. Just gonna go for the U-turn against this thing, and he gets that rough skin on me again, but I wanted to go for that slow U-turn to protect my incoming Vaporeon, even though Vaporeon also carries max defense. I figure I don't want any extra damage on Vaporeon, because Vaporeon needs to stay a little more healthy than Type Null, because Vaporeon is the Cleric, so this thing needs to stay a little bit healthy. Anyway, in comes Evire again, as I just go for the Wish. I know I can actually live a wild charge, but I decide to switch into type null anyway. I know that he could cross chop me, but I just have to trust in the null. I have to trust in the null at some point, man. Actually, I've been trusting in the null all game. It's just been, you know, I have to keep continue trusting it. If he goes to the cross chop, I, I can tank that, right? Damn straight I can. Type null, everybody. Type null. Just, yeah, you know what? It's your just null damage. Your entire damage is null. That's what it means. I go for a return against this thing. It ends up hitting it down to low red, so unfortunately not quite a KO. Um, I am going to switch out because I don't want to lose Null. I go into my B drill knowing that he's locked into Cross Chop. And, uh, you know, I just like no damage because I actually X4 resist that. I'm like, you know what? This is actually an opportunity for me. Set up Toxic Spikes. I mean, it's some nice damage if he switches into... I mean, he still has Guard Chomp, but I can't obviously Toxic... Uh, I can't get the uh, Confi Poison to already a status. But um, the Electivire and uh, the Scar Chomp can still get status, so... And his Glalie, for that matter, and I'd really like to wither down that Glalie. Anyway, Garchomp is going to go for the Stone Edge for some reason. I have no idea why he didn't go for the Earthquake there um, at all, because Earthquake is stronger. Would have definitely killed B, um, even though it's not super effective. I mean, it's, it's a B, but whatever. Skip Gandy going to skip Gandy. Anyway, he's going to go for the uh, Stone Edge, and uh, yeah, that's uh, not going to kill me. So he's, choice he's definitely Choice Scarfed. Um, I didn't have to sack Heat Ran to see what he would lock, you know, what we, he would do. I, I just kind of get it, wanted to get a free switch in a Vapor. And uh, I get the Ice Beam off it, and that will KO the Garchomp. But in comes Comfy again. And of course, he just has to defog away my Toxic Spikes. But whatever. Um, I just go for the Wish again because I really want to get my Type Null healthy. Because Type Null is the champ, and he can't hurt it. He can, literally cannot hurt Type Null. So I'm like. He's gonna go into Type Null. His last Pokemon is Glalie and this Comfy. Oh, and he also has, um... What else do you have? He has Electivire left, I think. But anyway, in comes my Type Null. He goes for the Leech Seed. I'm like, okay, like I said, you're gonna get one round of Leech Seed, then I'm gonna U-turn. And there's nothing you can do about it, because... You can't Leech Seed on the Switch. Because I my U-turn my is slow. You would, uh, you know, just use uh, Leech Seed on my Type Null again. Well, she already is seeded. So, yeah, there's really nothing you can do. I'm just gonna go for it. Um... And he is going to try to drain and kiss me. 
which is going to do absolutely nothing. Um, even though I'm max defense and best, not max special defense, you know, it's still Evia Light and uh, Comfy's special attack isn't that great, especially since he didn't have any uh, setup move like Calm Mind in this game, and this gets me that safe switch now into B Drill. And at this point, there is no reason for me not just to poison jab everything. So I'm just going to go for that poison jab. In comes the Electivire. It's it's uh, probably the best thing he has to sack, definitely. Um, and that goes down, and it does give him that safe switch into Mega Galalee. And um, yeah, he has nothing to do to type Null. I don't even care, man. I mean, plus he could have the Ice Shard still, so I'm like, oh, it's going to switch out. Um, actually, I don't know. I know that he does not actually have it, because he had, um, actually, well, I don't know. Actually, he said after the battle he didn't have it. I know that. Um, but either way, he just goes for the Earthquake, and that does nothing. Oh, he just reads the Double Edge first, and then he does for the Earthquake against my Vapor, and that's not doing anything either. I go for the Scald, gets this thing nice and damaged, and now this thing is in Psychic KO range. So I know at this point in the match, I can pretty much, um, I can finish this with Tampa Lele. I can finish this with... Um, with Mega B, it doesn't matter. I can finish with either one of those. I just need to get out and, you know, get into one of them. And who is the perfect Pokemon to get into one of my Pokemon? That's my Type Null, because I can just tank hits, and I can just U-turn, and that's Tapu. Yeah, so there's my free switch. I go over the U-turn, get another useless crit, Um, and in comes my Tapu Lele, who is Scarfed and will outspeed the, um, this thing, this uh, Mega Glalie. And uh, there's the Psychic, gonna take that guy out. And his last Pokemon is the Comfy, who of course has max special defense. So instead of letting this thing stall anymore, I'm just gonna switch directly to Mega Beedrill. Um, because Mega Beedrill can one-shot this guy with a uh, Poison Jab. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. He can Leech Seed me, that's fine. But Poison Jab is gonna probably kill this thing about three times over. And um, to add injury to insult... I also get the crit. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna spoil it. The Dolphions are going to 4-1, and one, my friends. And, uh, yeah, we take back the blue division with this win. And, uh, we're looking pretty good. I I'm pretty happy with the way my team's been performing. Um, you know, we had that loss against President Tim, but this has been a great draft. And this, I really like the team I put together against Skep Gandy. I thought I team draft, I think this is probably the best, um team build I ever may uh, I have had yet in this league and it abused the bulk of the Pokemon uh, Vaporeon and Type Null. I haven't used Type Null yet. I've only used Vaporeon once and uh, they're kind of one of the some of the bulkier Pokemon on my team aside from Decidueye I included well Decidueye included um, and I you know I, I like the I like and you know I'm trying to play around with this I'm liking the versatility with with the uh, you know the ability to hit hard with you know Como O and Beedrill and uh, also uh, play defensively with a lot of these Pokemon and it worked out really well this week that Comfy was annoying but man um, you know even though Type Null got no kills and Beedrill had three by the way three kill game for Beedrill um, I have to give the MVP to Type Null just because of how he was. It's the most valuable Pokemon on the field. It, it it allowed me to get the get the you know um matchup advantages all freaking game long. So I'm uh, really happy with ta um uh, tap. You know what? He's a Tapu now. Tapu Null's debut, my friends. I'm gonna nickname it Tapu Null. I swear to God. Next time it's gonna be Tapu Null. Anyway, today's question of the day is going to be: What is your favorite pivot move? In Pokemon, is in a move that causes you to switch. I guess you can include Baton Pass, even though it's banned um, by Smoking Rules now. Um, U-Turn was doing work for me uh, this entire game, both on Beedrill and uh, my my um, my Type Null. But actually, I really do like Parting Shot, even though it has a limited um, limited uh, availability on Pokemon. I'm kind of sad Type Null doesn't get access to Parting Shot like Sil Valley does, his big brother. So, oh well. Um, Volt Switch is really nice too, but Volt Switch has obviously those those uh, annoying um, immunities. So leave a comment about that, and see you guys again next time. Later.